If you enjoy the Ranveer show, this is the channel for you. You don't have to consume every single podcast, but you have to binge watch all the clips on this channel. It's TRS Clips. I always wondered how asteroids, which are maybe even like 100 kilometers in diameter, how does an asteroid like that hurt the Earth? In terms of 100 kilometers is not that much when you look at the Earth's size. And then someone told me, okay, take a bullet and throw it at someone with your hand. It won't do any damage. Then put it in a gun and throw it. And then see the kind of damage it does. That's what people don't understand about momentum. That momentum is also an outcome of velocity. These asteroids are kind of surging through space at very high velocities and hitting Earth like bullets. When an asteroid hits the surface of the Earth, and there aren't too many that hit the surface of the Earth in our timelines. When was the last massive asteroid hit? I think it was some somewhere in the early 20th century in Russia, somewhere in Siberia. Uh, I can think of two events. One was in 1908. 1908. Uh, the, the, it was somewhere in Siberia. I forget the name of that thing. Um, okay, I can't, I can't remember the name, but I'm sure you can uh, put that on the screen. And the more recent one was the Chelyabinsk meteor. Which meteorite which exploded over Chelyabinsk. It's a town in, in Siberia. Hundreds of buildings were damaged. Windows exploded all over the place. There was this massive shock wave that shook the entire city. And the meteor, some parts of it actually broke through the ice and, and hit a lake. And they were able to recover some parts of the meteorite. Yeah. Randall Carlson keeps saying that with our technologies available, we should go out and destroy these meteors, which are kind of on collision course with the earth. Uh, because if we actually put our time and resources towards it, that technology is about 10 years away, which is not that long. And it gives us enough time to protect ourselves. And we as human civilization don't understand how harmful meteor showers can be on us. Like if it could wipe out entire races of dinosaurs, we don't even understand what it could do to us. And even uh, the most recent ice age, which was about 10,000 BC, around that time, 11,000 BC, um, was supposedly theoretically caused because of some sort of an asteroid hitting the earth. The younger Dryas impact yeah, theory. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow, so much to talk about here, sir. And this is actually the juice of this particular episode for me. Um, firstly, let's just begin with what an asteroid impact can do to our planet for those people who don't know much about the subject. Right. So, um, if you go out and, and, and look at the night sky, on a clear on a clear night with no light pollution if you stare at the sky for let's say one hour you're gonna see at least five or six meteor trails it's that common and approximately a hundred tons of meteor dust falls on the planet every single day so we have impacts but most of these are micro impacts sometimes you have impacts on the ocean that people miss because the oceans cover two-thirds of the of the surface area of the of the planet so there are lots of impacts that we never see, but they happen. Which if they happen on land, they'd be very harmful? Uh, not very harmful. Typically, these are not very, very massive impacts. But a typical meteorite or, or asteroid, when it hits the Earth or when it enters the Earth's atmosphere, rel relative to the Earth, it typically travels between 30 to 70 kilometers per second. Not per hour, per second. It's way faster than a bullet. It's, it's way faster than hypersonic missiles. It's, it's, it, the speed is incredible. At that speed, when it enters the Earth's atmosphere, it compresses the atmosphere so, so, so much that it, it, becomes, uh, it becomes hot enough to actually burn the atmosphere. The air molecules start glowing and vibrating and vibrating. And that is what causes the long meteor trail that we observe. Mm. Because the meteor essentially starts evaporating it in, and within a fraction of a second, most of it evaporates. Now, if it is large enough, the meteor may get so superheated that instead of evaporating in a long streak, it ev evaporates all of a sudden in an explosive explosion. Like a bomb. Yeah, it, it's like a nuclear bomb in the sky depending on the size. And some, some of these are so big that they actually impact the Earth. While they are in that bomb state. Yes, there is an explosion, but some part of it does impact the Earth. Now, if a meteor or, or if an asteroid is, let's say, 10 meters wide, that's what gives rise to the Tunguska kind of event, 1908. Which if, did a lot of damage. Yes, it did a lot of damage. It, it flattened about, I don't know how many square kilometers of forest, massive amount. So a 10 meter asteroid flattened out it was like a small office building kind of thing. 
but still i mean it flattens out it flattened several thousand square kilometers of forest wow that's this is what people need to understand this is the universe that we live in yes and, and there is shit out like you're, if you're scared of sharks in the <laughs> ocean look up for look a up. minute anyway go on yeah so if you have a small office building kind of let's say one small bungalow kind of meteor meteorite it's going to flat se- flatten several thousand kilometers square kilometers of forest or whatever it impacts yeah most likely it will explode in the air itself but the explosion will flatten everything but if you have a kilometer wide asteroid that's going to be life changing the the asteroid that hit the yucatan peninsula of mexico the chicxulub asteroid was approximately 10 kilometers in diameter between 8 and 10 to 12 kilometers in diameter the effect of that impact was incredible the crater is more than 130 kilometers in diameter the crater the impact crater this impact caused tsunamis that are like several kilometers high and these tsunamis were supersonic tsunamis they were traveling faster than the speed of sound and these tsunamis circled the globe multiple times the atmosphere itself burned up for a few hours the temperature on the surface of the planet was more than 100 degrees celsius very few very little life survived this and then there was much of the earth's crust evaporated in the impact went up into the atmosphere cooled down and then started falling back on the earth like molten magma and lava and this uh, and then there was this big global nuclear winter kind of thing where all the soot that was thrown out in the air circled the atmosphere for about 10 years so for about 10 years there was no sunlight so if you're a living being on the planet at the time of an asteroid impact what do you experience initially you will see nothing if you're on the other side of the planet then you will experience uh, supersonic hurricanes first of all storms that uh, come pass through faster than the speed of sound then you will have enormous 3 to 3 km tall tsunamis that are again supersonic in nature then of course the temperature will rise very fast maybe more than 100 degrees celsius so unless you got very thick skin or you can burrow deep down under the, under the ground you're going to perish in that yeah then there will be the ensuing nuclear winter which means for a, for a decade or so there is there's going to be no sunlight so all the vegetation will die out if the vegetation dies out whatever life has survived animal life has survived most of it will die out because if there's no vegetation the herbivorous animals die if the herbivorous animals die the carnivorous animals die so very little survives out of this thank you for watching our team spends a lot of time curating playlists just for you so make sure you check out all the playlists that we've created on TRS clips if you want to speed up your learning process